welcome to the show ladies and gents we got the stars of the pilot or pass po- podcast it is Robert Sweeney. Hello, hello. I love the uh, the requirement for prompting right there. Prompting. <laughs> I, I do need a good prompting, though. I will just I try. get lost. Say hi. And Benjamin Bate. I like how your tone changed in between conversation like to be and introduction. <laughs> it's very nice. It's like, <clears throat> welcome, everybody, to uh, the Totally Jacked Up podcast. Woo. Woo. Yeah, I hate introducing myself, but yeah, it's <laughs> Cam Sully here. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, everyone, thank you for coming to the Jacked Up Podcast. I am taking over for Cam uh, right now. He's going to be. <laughs> I stepping am stepping back. down. I've been uh, with my foreseeable past future. <laughs> um, we'll be renaming this uh, Piloter Pass Two, Jack- the Jacked Up um, Podcast, <laughs> second <Yeah>. iteration, <laughs> the Jacked Up Piloter Pass. <laughs> <laughs> jack or not podcast no i don't think a I've whole in one podcast what running a second podcast <laughs> too much I'm, work I'm happy, I'm happy with mine and just guesting on other people's <laughs> yeah that, that sounds like a comfy place to be other people <laughs> oh man it, it's been great it's a long time coming so we are talking about the comedy duo the marsh butters in a two-part outing duo not duo, more like quadruple. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like the comedy acts. Now, so yeah. Like Monkey Business, Horse Feathers, Night of the Opera, Room Service, Go West, A Day at the Duck Races. Soup. Yeah. It's just at the circus. It just fucking amazing, guys. I, so, what was your intro to them? Was it Duck Soup or was it? Uh, Duck Soup. Actually, in high school, All right, so uh, I was in a. Yeah. A my. Uh, <laughs> my uh humanities, humanities t- yeah you were, were you in that class with me robbie <laughs> yeah i think i think we were in the same class because i remember watch like i literally sat here that night when you were like yeah just watch these like ones if you're feeling rushed and i was like oh i'm not feeling rushed i'm just gonna watch them anyways um and i'm sitting here and i'm like i've seen this <laughs> i've seen this like this is still funny but i've seen this before yeah, we had a high school teacher that taught humanities and we were going over like uh, like more recent history, like turn of the century up until like <laughs> World War II, the 1950s history. Like that was the time frame we were focusing on that that month. Right. Um, and our teacher brought in duck soup for everyone to watch. Um, <laughs> and so we spent a couple classes watching that together. That was such a wild movie to like great, introduce to 16 movie. year olds. <laughs> Because they really are ageless. And I kid you not, like, back when we were still, like, doing VHSs, like, we had, had just raised it. Like, all the great movies I love, like, our grandparents didn't want to watch because they'd seen it about, you know, 20, 10 times and they're just too long. Something like, you know, Lawrence of Arabia. And they didn't like Lord of the Rings. And our cousins love Lord of the Rings. So it's like, yeah, we're going to have to bring some comedy. We need something that, you know, it's just, it can be like the jerk where it's a little risque, but not to the point where it's like you got to leave the room. And then... You know, we we already d- kind of used up our privileges. We've done too many movies that were just too goddamn stupid, and that is like, yeah, they don't want to watch something like Anchorman or what have you. So it's, what can we do? And so we we did start bringing a lot of other ones just to our lake house. We found some used VHS tapes and half price books, and we started bringing Monkey Business. And I think we're about in our sixteen, you know, years old at that point. But it was just great because it's like, okay, this is something for everybody. But yeah, I've always seen a bunch of their show movies sometimes even repeatedly just on turner classic movies and i just was always just in admiration at just how there's just again something for everybody just so dense so diverse different kinds of gags they're the stooges in buster keaton 2.0 they are doing so much different types of satire and i mean there's a reason groucho hosted so many shows he he's just so sharp (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) Oh, uh, and 16 is such a good time to be introduced to the Marx Brothers. Oh, I, 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 I know them since I was 12, but I mean, I mean, I, 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 to build on your point, yes, they, they're they ageless. Like, everybody's going to be getting them. Like, you, you can be seven years old and you're going to find them fucking funny. Like, they're, they're just dynamite. And don't get me wrong, I love the Stooges. Uh, my mother hated it because she's just like, oh, it promotes <laughs> violence. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, my parents also had that that same issue. With it, it just, you're going to poke your sister's eyes out. I'm like, it's fucking funny. No, she'll put her, her hand up and, and do the thing that uh, 
that Curly does to not get his eyes poked And if down. so what, so what? Come on, it's fucking funny. You'll live. My <laughs> sister's the only once. one in my family with 2020 vision, so like we should have poked her eyes more. Because that... the rest of us are wearing like <laughs> fucking bottle cap glasses. Everybody does it. <laughs> I was the gentle giant who would often squeeze my brother too, uh, too much, and he'd cry or accidentally push my sister down, and it's just, just so funny. It's just like, all right, I guess I'm in timeout. I didn't punch anyone, but I'm just, <laughs> still, they just they don't have a good sense of balance. So, mm. <laughs> wait two more years. But it's just so funny how it's just what everyone thinks will go south. It just doesn't. It's just like no be worried about context or movies that again, just aren't age appropriate or that you can't modify for TV and have just such disturbing themes that are going to be a while before you can mature. But it was like, if you're watching a TV show, that's, that's an okay way to just kind of get all sorts of different themes and not know, not be just watching it. Cause you're like, Hey, this is naughty or I shouldn't be watching this. It's like you know, with these guys, I mean, you can watch them because it doesn't matter what period you're born in that they, they've dated pretty well. You're not going to see something where you're like, Ooh, you know, it's not like you watch the little rascals and you're like, Ooh, buckwheat's a pretty, you know, disrespected character. <laughs> the, you know uh, I mean? One of the things that I like about the Marx brothers just in general in, in that term of like, they are like timeless. They're age appropriate for most people. Like a lot of the jokes that, uh, like Groucho is making that are so inappropriate that they can't show you anything because at the time they just, that was not allowed, especially in the big studio system. Yeah. Uh, but like he says, these things that are so not quick. Released, but yeah. yeah, exactly. He says these things that are so quick that like, I think younger people, like if I were watching them when I was like six or seven, I wouldn't get like, I had that feeling or I had that happen with me with a uh, airplane. Um, yes, exactly. Lot, like <laughs> quick stuff. And my parents are like rolling on the floor laughing. They love it because like they when I was seven, my parents were like my parents are old when they had me. They're like in their like <laughs> late 30s and 40s. <laughs> um so they they like they knew all of that stuff going in, but like when it was like a goofy like slapstick thing, like basically anytime Leslie Nielsen was on the screen, it's like right? don't call me Shirley. I got that. Oh, let me riddle you uh... this. <laughs> my my mother wanted us to get stuff like Leslie Nielsen, but often their stuff was like out of stock at the blockbuster, or she was like, uh, it's probably too dumb. And she was the same one. She was like, she thought Naked Gun was the same thing as Police Academy, and like totally different kind of comic, uh, similar but totally different, gun. but. All funny, but it's it's so funny how sometimes you got to explain jokes to even the older people. But it's just so funny how yes, like you say, it's like it's so funny how there'd be a double standard. You're like, you think this is okay, and the Stooges aren't okay. Dude, I took a airplane on a school trip uh, <laughs> in high school. I think it was like sophomore year of high school or oh, something like that. That's amazing. <laughs> and I got the I got the the monitor to put it on. There's like, oh, it's a comedy from like I think it's like the late seventies, eighties time frame. It's like whatever, it'll be fine. And then the scene where the plane is like everyone's <laughs> panicking and the woman runs across topless right oh uh, i can't like, show this to you now <laughs> just like boobs everywhere we're on a school trip <laughs> the monitor walked up took the dvd out of the thing and gave it back to me right after that scene i'm like damage is done like we saw it <laughs> you know what you're going back anymore. now you might as well finish it yeah know? like the best jokes like the uh the inflatable pilot that they look like they're giving a blowjob to is, is still got to be there. But ever seen a grown man naked? You're okay with that and not the other stuff? Okay, yeah. It is funny how it's it's almost kind of like when you see some of the graphic shows like Trilogy of Terror or even the X Files spinoff Millennium. Is like they even if they didn't show anything, it disturbed enough people to like they never showed it again except at like four in the morning <laughs> it's just it really is amazing how some stuff can get to people and they never want to show it again and it's just like okay i can understand something like mod or even all in the family where they just went too far and got you know will smith gets shot on the fresh prince i get that but if you, did you think this is the worst thing that anyone could be watching you, i'm sorry we are gonna have to strongly agree to disagree and in, in which case there is no agreeing like this Come on, there are so many different layers to comedy and context. And if you think showing it or, you know, is bad and then just mentioning it is okay, it's like there's there's just so many ways to have these arguments. It's like 
just know what you're going to watch. And if you don't want to show it, but I mean, people are going to find it eventually anyway. It's just as bad as when there was gay undertones and like Rocco and friends and, you know, Ren and Stimpy started out as PG and then became an R rated cartoon. It's like, there's just so many ways to be introduced to someone. It's like, do you know Robin Williams from his off color stand up, or do you know him from when he was doing voices or in, you know, PG 13 comedies, you know, it's just, there's so many ways to be introduced to someone, but eventually you're going to see all their material. And so it's just so funny how you, you just occasionally see it. It's like, okay, you can watch Eddie Murphy's movies, but you can't watch raw. It's like, it's the same Eddie Murphy. It doesn't make a difference what version you saw. Of him. <laughs> you know? I, I guess there is like a, uh, like, a, a, like you have to concede that maybe zone. like there is like a time frame to watch it. Like watch a couple of these and then watch Raw or like. Right. You can like, watch but the, Shrek, but you can't watch the, 48 Hours. <laughs> yeah. Just like you should watch these other ones, especially if it's like a little kid. But, you know, that's it, that's their determination. It doesn't help. Like, that you're not going to lock everything off forever. And My it parents doesn't tried help. to forbid me from playing Halo. But I still went over to my neighbor's house who had two older brothers and played Halo there. And see, like, Halo is like the least offensive because especially with that Immortal Kombat, you can turn the la- the profanity and gore off. Oh, but we didn't. We but, definitely didn't. And we were seven then, and we wanted it all there. It's like the least gruesome. Like I would be worried about something like Black or Silent Hill. But even then, you know, it's like there's so many. Even then, I'd rather be people be playing video games then I don't know, watching a movie that's very traumatizing or they don't understand the cultural significance of, and it's just too tame by their standards. You know, it's like, you're just not, uh, there's so many movies where people are going to talk smack about because they just don't understand. You know, when I watch a movie, I at least, even while watching it and whether, regardless of whether I love it or despise it, I know why it has, you know, it's won over so many people's hearts and minds and souls, you know, it's like, so movies, you sometimes do need a little supervision or you need to watch them in a certain setting or in a certain mindset. And with games is like, <laughs> just go ahead. It's playtime. You know, <laughs> it's, it, there's some that are going to be a little too far, but there's plenty of them that are not profane or not too gruesome and don't have any innuendo, but yeah, it's just like, it's tough finding that in between area where it's like, okay, well, I know you guys want me to do this level, but you know, I'm getting bigger. So my interests are changing. (laughs) But we, uh, we brought up airplane a minute ago and, uh, (laughs) and one of the things that the Marx brothers very clearly had a lot of influence on, or a lot of the comedies like from that airplane era. Like I, I cannot think of what, uh, any Mel Brooks movies would look like yeah. if the Marx Brothers were not around. Oh, even Carl Reiner, especially, yeah. and even just some other sketch shows, classic sketch shows. It's just like, but yes, like you say, kind of like the Stooges, a lot of people will remember some of the physical gags, but it's like, well, here's the thing. There, there's way more wordplay with them. And like you say, just smart ass, you know, just layers to it. And I, I definitely don't think you'd even have half the original roasters. You would not have Don Rickles. You would not have Richard Belzer. You would not have probably even degrees of Billy Crystal or Whoopi Goldberg. I don't think you would have, you know, just some of those beloved comedians you have now who are, you probably wouldn't even have modern day ones, like say, regardless of whether they're foul or not, you know, (laughs) I don't think you'd even have Jim Gaffigan. I don't think you'd have, even though a lot of those guys are known again for just being in front of a mic and just being, having their own quirks is like, there's just so much of this mentality of these guys are basically man childs and they're going around and getting into mischief, but it's just so funny because it's just like, there's, it's a simple joke telling, you know, there's a buildup, there's some keeping you in suspense. And then there's the whammo, you know, punchline. And there's just so many degrees of it. And, it kills every time. And like you say, sometimes they go so fast. You're like, I got to rewind. What do they say? <laughs> you're talking about these, like, what were you saying, Robbie? I was going to say, yeah, no, it's, it's, I was going to compare this to like a boxing match, essentially like the comedy. It is Marx verbal have. boxing. Yeah. Especially a groucho there. 
Groucho oh, is man. just constantly throwing jabs and hooks and uppercuts. And Harpo and, is always going around, just kind of just giving the idiotic grin. Oh, it, yeah. it, how can you not love Harpo? You know, it's just the <laughs> physicality. I was watching a a, a, Har- a Marx Brothers like documentary. Uh, oh, really? Like built leading up to this, I'm just like, oh, okay, we're coming on this podcast. We're going to talk about the Marx Brothers. <laughs> I should just like. I should I not be an idiot about it. Uh, you guys are fucking awesome. Nice. <laughs> but uh, I was I was lis- watching this documentary and like playing uh, Master Duel on my computer, and um, the the narrator is just like Harpo had a lot of trouble like delivering the lines, so they ended up deciding that he's going to be like completely silent the whole time. <laughs> it's literally the same That's documentary. The I kind of a bullying move, yeah. but it works. You know, it, it's kind of <laughs> like when you're using a infamous actor. Is like, just walk. Don't talk. I'll, I'll, fi- I'll find out. Me and the editor will figure out how to use you, buddy. You mister. <laughs> I just love the idea that he's just incapable of like acting. following the lines and acting. So they're just going to make him be the like the Charlie Chaplin of the group with the most right. physical sense of humor. He might as well have been Curly Joe or Shemp <laughs> of the stars. You know? he's, he's the he's, backup, but we can't get any backup. So you're part of our... Yeah, so we, we're relying on uh, Groucho and Harp uh, Chico you know, there the physical to shit. do all of like yeah. the drive the story, and then Harpo is just Chico's there with his own side awesome. stories. Man, Chico, <laughs> he he talks shit without actually saying anything explicit. It's just is what you could back then. He's like, he's always. It is funny. Is like Groucho is the one who finishes it. He has the last word. He never starts the argument. <laughs> Often he's like the face. He's the guy everyone takes seriously, even though he's like the screwiest of all of them. And then, yeah, Chico is like the one who's just like often in trouble or asking for help. And then like, oh, well, what do we do here? <laughs> uh, I love that uh, that musical number in Duck Soup uh, towards the beginning where he's talking about all the laws. Like, Groucho is talking about all the laws that he's going to enact. Like now that he's uh, the president of Fredonia, he's going to outlaw. He's like, if it's fun, <laughs> tell me, and it'll be illegal. <laughs> Don't right? Don't they talk some shit about like some other beloved stars of that era? Like, if I wanted to dance, I'd be Fred Astaire or some shit like that. Yeah, oh, they, it was so fast, and some of them because like those are the one the jokes that like do go over my head now because like. I'm not as well versed in movies from the 30s as I, I am. I was in... <laughs> a mystery science theater guy, so it's like, yeah, <laughs> or Looney Tunes. So it's like, even if you haven't seen any of their movies, you know what they look like. You see them at a restaurant or a fancy, you know, Hollywood inspired, mm-hmm. you know, event places. So like, okay, <laughs> even if you haven't seen any Lana Turner or Spencer Tracy movies, you know what they look like. Come on, you know. You're going to get that reference if you hear it on some kind of comedy show. I want to walk like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it helped that there's even a lot of 80s movies that go that, you know, that put on the reds, you know, <laughs> trying to walk like Gary Cooper, you know. <laughs> Dude, I was uh, seriously considering uh, today. I was I was walking down the street. Uh, I bought a beverage at the corner store. I'm like, I should have bought a cigar and like a thing of just <laughs> grease and just like put a grease mustache on and just held a cigar the entire time. We we're talking here today. I just, just got into the full, full groucho. Just... <laughs> Uh, he do, he knows how to smoke that cigar and it's so awesome his timing because it's often when he's brainstorming a scheme or he leaves it for so, last like you say he's having de- delivering a final speech that's just total just a ro- it might as well be a roast <laughs> before he joins the roasting clubs and, and like you say it's like if there's anyone who knows how to smoke a stogie it's definitely him I love that uh that uh bet your life you bet your life quip yeah where that woman in her 70s oh, is there just giving him a lecture about quitting smoke <laughs> you're right uh total about face where it's like i see and i think it helps that they could handle a joke and it's like yeah i'll i'll, I'll let you explode on me i'm just uh but uh, brace yourself i'm gonna have another thing that's just like a big giant comeback that you won't be able to compete with it's <laughs> like it's kind of like the Stooges is like, you can beat them up all you want. At the end of the day, they're going to destroy your house or your bar by the end of the skit. You know? yeah. By the end of the sketch, you're they done, might as well but... be mobsters who are just too stupid to realize they are. And it, it, like you say, it is just, that kind of comedy is kind of lost. Everyone was just imitating the physical acts or they were remembering more recent stuff like Jackie Chan or what have you. And you're like, no, 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 no. 
similar, definitely influenced, but different. You know, <laughs> like say, these... Jackie Chan is a great physical comedian, though. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's wonderful. But it's so annoying how sometimes people only know one or the other. There seems to be kind of a connection, even though there's been years of people watching cable TV and archive stuff being played on all kinds of channels where it's PBS or antenna stuff. But yeah, like, like we've so, got all of the access to this on Netflix and Amazon prime now, Yeah, even Tubi, and it's free. Come on. What, what's your excuse? Yeah. <laughs> and HBO max. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I've got a, a box set though of Marx brothers movies. I, that just lives on the shelf. That was my research. I was just like, <laughs> find come up with cover art. And it was like, Oh my God, umbrella corporation did a region free Blu-ray. I might just have to pick that up. <laughs> what is it? Umbrella corporation did a uh, Yeah. Yeah, uh, like they did like a box set of like for their like best movies and uh, of Resident uh, Evil <laughs> or Marx Brothers stuff. <laughs> That's an actual Blu Ray <laughs> company, but yeah. Oh, okay. When, when someone says Umbrella Corporation, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Jesus. I, I, I and see, you know, I haven't even played the game. But I know exactly what you meant. So it's like, uh, it, it is funny you know, how everyone's got all these similar corporations, and everyone instantly is just like, wait, you mean like this? Similar, <laughs> not, not like. <laughs> Like the zombie bioweapon people? Yeah, I, I I had one film cinematographer who I don't work with anymore whose nickname was Marty McFly and everyone was instantly perking up Back to the Future, right? Yep. <laughs> but it took me a no, minute. You like, uh, call him that because he tried to have sex with his mother, right? Nope. <laughs> I'm not that big a pig. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the Stooges probably did. But who knows? <laughs> It's just such a Maybe wild uh, <laughs> robot chicken sketch. Is is like uh, <laughs> he's just like disappearing. He's like, oh well, I guess I'll go. <laughs> right. and he reappears. Oh, I guess I'll so, get it over with. <laughs> so fucked up. Oh, uh, well, uh, I th- that and the Muppet Tin Little Indians sketches gold comedy gold. But yeah, is like uh, that's why I love robot chicken anything that hasn't been thought of or has been thought of but you never really wanted to see but it kind of secretly did just to see how fucked up it could be it was like they basically had done an animated form <laughs> uh that was another program that i think i only watched at other people's houses growing up <laughs> yeah it, it definitely was made for that and that was around the same time they were doing live action stuff and then they started showing live action movies like even the room and you're like what is this <laughs> this cult underground scene of comedy that you hadn't really seen in a while that you were used to just taping stuff and the joke was go to work and talk about a movie that no one else has seen that you recommend highly and then seeing the reaction i hated that or oh, i can't believe i've never heard of this it's such a great gym you found but uh these guys are great because every just about everyone has seen them or knows about them and has discovered them. I think they're fortunate enough. They're kind of are like the studios or classic Warner brothers cartoons. It's like, they're easy to find. They're beloved. And we're not talking about robot chicken anymore, are we? No, but I, that was a good segue because I think robot chicken is definitely another one. It's like, if no one's watching South park or family guy or Simpsons anymore, <laughs> definitely there's someone who's been watching robot chicken <laughs> and just that degree of comedy parody. You're just like, that sounds so fucked up. Was that a cartoon? Oh yes, it was. <laughs> I, I'm always curious. It's like where like different franchises or like IPs or just like people fall in like the social, like it's all connected. Like, but it's like, kind of like if you haven't seen Space Ghost, you've seen Eric Andre, which is the same the kind of, you know, spoof of a talk show. And I think you could definitely applaud Groucho for that because he was one of many comedians who would do kind of a very meta humor before that was really a thing. <laughs> or at least <laughs> before it was like widely known. Right. Just like, like how Trailer Park Boys and Larry Saunders were kind of almost doing a mockumentary before the office and the rest of development were kind of popularizing it a few years later. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I want to, I want to know at what point like Groucho glasses, like that Halloween stuff sort of like fall yeah. out of like the social consciousness. Like are, when are we going to, as a group, not recognize Groucho glasses as Groucho glasses? That's a good question. Cause it seems like, anything else is instantly recognized. Even people who haven't seen something like that's a popular show, like empire or game of Thrones get the humor because everyone knows about it enough. The internet has evolved as an animal 
but yeah, if you get to where you don't recognize the Groucho kind of humor or snarky remarks or the glasses and the cigar, then yeah, we're definitely doomed. <laughs> it's just kind of like if you can recognize a Robert De Niro face or a Samuel Jackson kind of profane mouth, I think you can recognize Groucho. <laughs> you know? I, I just wonder if like at some point we're going to like walk into the store like uh, in, into like a spirit Halloween or something like that. And instead of Groucho <laughs> glasses, they've like replaced the display with like, um, I can literally tell you what the display is going to say. It's just going to say spy disguise glasses. <laughs> because, spy disguise mustache glasses. Yeah. With mustache. Because <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you boys. You guys said Groucho glasses and I had to type it in. Real no, <laughs> no, Sweeney. So I, I think we may be at that point where society is starting to decline. <laughs> Almost like recognizing I've, a skit. I've opened and Pandora's box. So this is like a moment if uh. me and Ben were saying a very commonly used line and you didn't realize we're talking about Kids in the Hall or like Python. But I know what you mean. There are times where it's just like, I see people talk all the time talking about movies they're just now seeing. And it's like, I'd rather you didn't. And you just impressed me and act like you saw it growing up on cable. You know, as a kid. There's so many programs like movies or, or shows that if uh, I, I spent all of my time watching the shows that people recommended to me, I like for one would never leave my apartment ever again. <laughs> and two would probably, I would be insufferable. After insufferable. That. <laughs> and you'd be like, I can't believe the shit my, you know, my friends grew up watching, but it's almost kind of like, what when do you, you mean to- you've never watched Midsommar? <laughs> Such a great Ari Aster film. It's only three hours long and uh, paced incredibly slowly. And going to uh, piss you off and make you talk yeah. shit on in the internet. But yeah, it is kind of like, <laughs> it, it's almost like when you go to a cosplay and you realize, I had no idea this many people dress up as characters from Firefly or Longmire. I thought I was the only fucker who watched it. You know, it's just, it is that just yeah. eye-opening moment where you're just like, Jesus, where does anyone get any time? Like you basically got to be watching it on the door out as opposed to just relying on the video store. And I see other people who are too cynical and they spend literally two hours looking for something to watch on streaming. It's like, just go to a suggestion site. Usually if you type up, you know, movies or shows similar to this, you get suggestions right away based on keywords or commonly linked movies. Uh, If you like Olympus has fallen, you might like watching Every season of the West Wing. <laughs> no. Oh, now, now I feel a little bit attacked right there. I love just browsing through streaming services and never picking. Something. Well, <laughs> it is my favorite pastime. It, it, it can be fun, but I mean, these guys are like the kind who like acts like there aren't anything good. It's like it. There are. There's good shit on there, but you gotta look for it, and you have to hit play. <laughs> sometimes let it. There's been a few times where my TV has pulled a Skynet. I kid you not. It just starts playing a show. And we're like, uh, the, the other day, apparently, it went all full-blown Skynet. And it just, it, the volume was all the way up and they couldn't turn it down. I'm like, wasn't me. <laughs> I don't know what you guys press, but good job. You fell asleep and clicked on the remote. <laughs> Started playing all the Pandora music <laughs> for you. <laughs> and playing a movie on <laughs> Hulu. Uh, great job. <laughs> Uh, oh man so one thing uh, that i i love real quick just about like pop culture and stuff like that is like at some point things are deemed like important because they're they're like it broke so heavily the internet in. it broke the internet it inspired like, an ice bucket challenge <laughs> yeah. we'll return after these messages Do you ever find yourself thinking about who would win in a fight between Goku and Superman? Hi, I'm James Gavsey, and on the Who Would Win show, me and my co-host Ray ignore anything important happening in the outside world and debate fictional battles between characters from comics, movies, and video games. We got a new show every week, and almost always am I the winner. (laughs) Yeah, not true, Ray. In the past, we've discussed such matches as Captain America vs. Darth Vader, Solid Snake vs. the Iron Giant, classic matchups like Robocop vs. Terminator, and even the Muppets versus Sesame Street. That one was crazy. 
So if you're a fan of geek culture and love a spirited debate, check out the Who Would Win Show wherever you get your podcasts, or check us out at whowouldwinshow.com. We let things pile up in the DVR, we add them to our queues, we wait for the DVDs and Blu-rays, we time shift. The Time Shifters Podcast. Sci-fi, horror, fantasy, superheroes, comedy, action, film, television, maybe some not-so-current events. Find us on iTunes or at timeshifterspodcast.com. Cool thing about Blind Knowledge is we are in multiple countries. We are worldwide all across the globe. We are in the U.S. We are in the U.K. We are in Canada, Germany, India, Japan. We're in Australia, y'all. BlindKnowledge.com. Now back to the feature presentation. Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Naruto, all things that we love, all manga that were originally published in the legendary magazine Weekly Shonen Jump. But not every series can run for 300 chapters and have a hit anime. This is David. This is Jordan. We're the hosts of Shonen Flop. Each episode, we look at manga that ran and jumped that didn't quite make it. We discuss what it did wrong, what it did right, how the series could have turned itself around, and ultimately, was it a flop or not? Run all your favorite podcast apps, and you can find us at shonenflop.com. Keep on flopping, floppers. <laughs> yeah. I love that Duck Soup, of all films, is in the National Film Registry in the Library of Congress. Oh, man. <laughs> it, it really did change my life. And I was a dipshit. I was a 12-year-old guy. And I'm like, oh, it's great. But I, I was at the time where I understood what it was saying. And no other comedy did that for me at the time. At the time, you know, any other comedy, you know, would just be, I remember the skets. I remember the over-the-top humor. But it was like almost like the cult comedies of the eighties and of even today, something like UHF or Tropic Thunder is like, it's so many different degrees of humor. Even someone like Gremlins appealed to me growing up. Cause I was like, you're seeing them make fun of Hollywood. You're seeing them make fun of war recruitment ads. You're making them even just patriotism and how it doesn't fucking mean anything. You know, it's like, that's it's great. Team America. Yeah. Team most America's a patriotic perfect. film ever. America, the motion pictures, yeah. another one that took, surprised everyone and it came out until like july 4th and this is like yeah it's like patriotism is dead it's just people who think that it's proud to be everything and that freedom is actually free is like there's all these other degrees and comedy is much like horror and sci-fi and even action movies like comedy is the only way you can really get away with just certain social commentary and actually make it be really funny and people realize oh wow there is something besides you know the daily show or something else that made me get my head out of my ass and realize that's what that means that's what that's about you know? it's uh it's funny you say that i actually um my mom when i was growing up she taught a class or like held a seminar or whatever at the uh the church that i would attend when i was a kid oh wow um where it would take episodes of the simpsons and you play them. It was for like young adults. It was like for like 13, 14 this year olds. I think it was like Satan. eight. <laughs> <laughs> They'd watch the Simpsons and then have discussions about like the messaging behind it. And like why the Simpsons were talking about that. These um, creators just, make like, fun that's... of everybody. Not cool. <laughs> <laughs> they, they make fun of everybody, but then they talk about like really big subjects in that comedy. Like there's <laughs> one where uh, Homer eats like fugu or whatever. And he spends the entire day thinking about how he's going to die and like changing his life, uh, right? Like accordingly afterwards. And so they played that for a bunch of like 13 year olds and had tried to have a discussion after that. I don't know how that discussion went, but I would watch the shows with my mom. And I think she would try to do like the pre discussion with me. She'd be I like, so like, that. how did that? That's my mom growing up. Oh, man. <laughs> How did you survive? I can understand saying warning kids. Dude, why do you think I host a TV show podcast now? Well, because like, <laughs> you're a nerd. You talk a lot about it. Talk a lot but of shit. But it does get annoying when you're having to just like follow all this other stuff. And it's like the most we would get is like, kids, don't repeat the comedy. We know you know what it means. But <laughs> they were wise enough to actually just tell me it's like, okay, here's how the world works. If you cuss like a sailor, you start connecting the dots and think your parents, you know, cuss up a storm every day around you and they might call the CPS or some other bullshit. We don't want to deal with that. It was like, perfect. That's great. But I think that is true. I think there is a lot. 
there's been an increase in people want to shelter and run out the cl- until they just have to run out the clock. It's kind of like my father was always good as like when I went to college, it's like, did you actually get something out of it? Or was it just get by, get college work done? You're not really getting anything out of it. And I had to actually really think about that because half the time it was boring, but I could do the work. And other times it's like, you know what? No, that guy went the extra mile, did some really kick-ass speeches and that got us out of our shells, you know, <laughs> inspired us to come up with a final essay, you know, <laughs> it's like, but that's just true. Not everyone knows how to talk about their words. And then sometimes, I mean, it does help to kind of clue in everyone. My, my folks were good at, at least at explaining the cult of pill, how it caught on with various circuits, like why that was the funniest thing to them growing up. And so that was enough for me to clue in. It's like, oh, okay, I get it. And uh, like, it took me even years to watch something like uh, The In-Laws. You know, it's one of their favorite comedies growing up. But it took me a while to see it because it wasn't ever at Blockbuster. They only had the shitty, you know, forgettable remake. You know? <laughs> and, uh, but they'd be quoting it all the time. And I'd be like, what is that from? Back in the bowl. Oh, The In-Laws. Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen the in-laws and then finally I see it and get some Turner classic movie favorite. I'm like, I totally understand now. Pretty funny movie. <laughs> I've not seen that one, but I like the, uh, the, the discussion thing where it's like having the discussion about the films, it's something that I really like doing now. It absolutely infuriates my fiance. Cause like, we'll go to a movie and I'll want to talk about it for like the, like, she's if, like, can we go home? Kids got to <laughs> Well, luckily, we don't have anyone to feed besides ourselves. But, oh, so oh. she just wants to eat. I see. She just, she just wants me to shut up and stop talking about why Parasite is such like a a, a great film because it's like, oh, who's the parasite in that film? What's going on? What's the social commentary? How is the uh, like? How the dare South we use Korean our brain atmosphere? at the movies? Like, <laughs> and see, my sister's the opposite. She'll do the whole we're hanging out with friends. I'm like, bullshit. You didn't say a single thing. I'm doing all the talking. You're just sitting there texting. (laughs) It's just so funny how, yeah, it's like everyone says something, but they really mean something else. It's like, you just want to get out of the house. I get it. But just say that. Don't sugarcoat it. But it's also funny when everyone talks about a movie they grew up loving, but they haven't seen it since it was like on HBO in the 80s or something. They're like, and then they find out the hard way. Oh, this is what we chose the wrong crew to watch this with, or I forgot about this element, or it's not really funny till the second half, you know, it's, oh, or it's, dude, or it's a so meta funny. Scenes. It's not funny, funny. Like here's all the poop and, you know, sex jokes is <laughs> like, no, there, there's a little something more to this. It's kind of, and I, I made that mistake, especially I was talking 48 hours. I made that mistake. I saw a, you know, modified It's like, well, then what's the point? You know, it's just like Tarantino. There's no point if you're watching it, you know, modified and because half the jokes are the actual dialogue and including the ones that aren't even foul mouth you, you get no context you just see people shooting each other and then eddie murphy you know going you know <laughs> and like yeah, you need a different environment and uh, i'm even that way with die hard everyone goes oh violent christmas movie i'm like yeah but it's a fucking funny movie. movie yeah there's a great christmas people love movie. the dialogue i quote it all the time uh holy fucking shit, lady. You sound like I'm ordering a pizza here. And watching it on TV is unbearable. Yippee-ki-yay, melon farmer. is like, nope, not doing that. I'm, fuck you, TNT. <laughs> okay. I, uh, melon farmer. But everyone else also just thinks, oh yeah, pretty cool, you know, hostage movie. I'm like, no, 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 no. There's something more to it. It's more than just, you know, there's 10 different, you know, signature explosions. There's, so many different degrees. Hans Gruber's like the best James Bond villain that never was. There's the elements to it. There's going to different floors and there's trouble on every era, you know, and it inspired all these other movies like speed and even the TV show 24. And you're having to explain this to people and they just don't get it. They just remember, Oh, I love Bruce Willis. I love Die Hard. I'm like, yeah, but do you get it? You know, <laughs> do you get it? Get it. You know, and same thing with gremlins. I mentioned earlier is like, Oh, Gizmo is so cute. I'm like, yeah, but, do you get how it's making fun of corporate holidays and, you know, uh, creature movies and, <laughs> you know, kit even kind of goes deeper than child's play and making fun of toy companies, and, you know, <laughs> pets you shouldn't take home, you know? <laughs> yes. Cause the first thing that I uh, want to do when I see a cute animal is bring it into my house and feed it after midnight. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely have to do. Pour that. some water on it. No, <laughs> I mean that's basically what I wanted to do. The chipmunk I saw outside earlier today. <laughs> oh, isn't that wild too? If you mix up the chipmunks with Chippendale Rescue Rangers, oh man, you're gonna get all of the Disney and classic '80s TV fanboys on your on your case. And that, and, but it's also a common thing too. Sometimes you do mix up a joke. You're like, no, 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 no. That comedian took that joke and perfected that. It's like, are you quoting Bill Hicks or are you quoting Dennis Leary? <laughs> There's a difference in the, how, the way you're telling that joke. But yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think everyone can enjoy the March Butters. And even if you've seen the other people who are clearly aping them or heavily influenced by their roasting style or acknowledge them in their work, I mean, you mentioned Mel Brooks, and I think that's a perfect segue. Just about everybody has seen, you know, History of the World, Blazing Saddles, or even Spaceballs and the producers. And I think those four films, even Men in Tights, and I think all five of those movies are perfect, like absolute comedy perfection in that they, they're they so different. And yet, again, different gags and the right people get it. It's just kind of like other movies that were absolute failures. And then you watch them now and you're like, people hated this. I love this growing up. I love it even more. The more I watch it, like the cable guy or what have you, it's like, it may not be your cup of tea, but don't act like it's a clueless, you know, misfire. Don't act like it's the Ishtar of the world. You know, No, sir. Don't go there. I think one of the things that I, I, th- I remember this so strongly when I was growing up um, in like, it was like fourth grade or something like that i had mm-hmm. taped robin hood men in tights off of like oh, abc awesome. family or something like that and i so i had like still the, funny but the you're TV, gonna miss VHS a few moments <laughs> you're gonna, yeah but like when this is your only form of it this is what you take um, yeah. so i had watched it like a couple times on the tape and then i they went can't to school edit out the sex jokes but they're gonna edit out all yeah. this shit and- they they definitely didn't edit out the scene where he's uh mel brooks has pulled out the little tiny guillotine and is explaining to everyone what a uh, oh what is that the uh, a mince or something like that whatever that is it's like explaining that <laughs> whole situation that Breast, was my favorite on early YouTube I think <laughs> around circa oh nine or oh twelve where they would take movies that would never be aired on there like Pulp Fiction or American Psycho and make it look like a ABC Family trailer <laughs> yeah. I would love to see but, if they even attempted that because they would do that on occasion you're like cool intentions and. That one Chevy Chase movie is airing on here? No, sir. That's not cool. Very, very strange. I'm kind of interested, though. But uh, Caddyshack, I, but Caddyshack, you can do. You just got to take out like two off color lines of Bill Murray and, you know, the Tets, and you're good. <laughs> yeah. But I, uh, I, would, I went to like school the next week with this like fresh knowledge of like Robin Hood Men in Tights and then trying to explain that movie to really? eight year olds as an eight year old. <laughs> just people like, People would stare at me and they're just like, what are you talking about? What? Why would you watch a movie about guys in tights? Because like the humor, like that, just the title and everything. I did that with Monty Python too. There's a rabbit that's dynamite? (laughs) What? Eh? I feel like I Holy Grail? You sound like you've got religious sacrilege. (laughs) Sorry. I feel like I was the only eight-year-old that actually understood what you were talking about though. (laughs) Now, riddle me this. Since you guys were watching all the cool stuff, both from the past and then present day, did you kind of put the dots together at least by age 14 that is like, you know, everyone's telling you to check out all these new movies and they absolutely sucked or they just weren't cool on the second viewing. It's like, it's okay to know. You don't have to be the cool kid in school. You can acknowledge anything from any era. You don't have to just only watch older movies or only watch newer movies. You know? Dude, if yeah. you ever thought I had the illusion that I thought I was the cool kid in school, you are I didn't, sadly but I'm just <laughs> saying, I, I, I'd like to know just some backstories. Like, because there are some people who do think that ill-conceived notion is like, if I did, I haven't heard of it. It probably sucks. It's direct to video. It's like, no, you're just, you got shitty parents who didn't. Hear. It's just like, I'd have people who hadn't heard of Led Zeppelin or Van Halen growing up. That's the kind of shitty people I was working with. It's like, for real? Well, just turn on the radio. You've heard Van- classic rock music. Come on. <laughs> <sighs> no, unfortunately, I was one of the poor kids, so I had like VHSs a little bit longer, so cassette tapes a little <laughs> bit longer. Like, I never got sick of videotaping I, all the Johnny Bravos and other shit. You know, my favorite memory actually of high school is like everyone else always had like CDs and stuff for their car. 
I had this so little. I. Br- I actually still have it somewhere. Is this little brown suitcase filled with cassette oh. tapes? Oh man, yeah. can I buy any? <laughs> uh, no, I actually need it for my new car. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, you're going around in, in your, uh, in your I manual now. I think I have the uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2 cassette somewhere, so I might give it to oh, you. Oh, that's beautiful. Dude, I, rem- I want you, dude, you still have that. It's like just in your living room under a couple boxes. Yeah, I we were messing with it last time <laughs> I was over there. I still got CDs, dude. I get the, I'm get. i the guy who goes to La La Land Records when it's discounted. It's like Hell yeah. the album you can't find on Spotify or iTunes, and you're like, I guess I'll pay 50 bucks just this once. This <laughs> It's worth just it. this one time to this hear week. it great because hearing it on youtube no no you need that surround sound and if you're a fan you owe it it's going to have unreleased tracks it's going to have funny like audio inserts that are interactive and then just even a booklet that explains to you something you're not even going to find on wikipedia about the making of it and how they conjured up a certain tone and it's like worth it totally worth it everyone else is going to Say, where did you get it all digital? It's like, all right, your loss. <laughs> I actually know why you shouldn't have it all digital because it could end up at the bottom of a pond. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is that is actually why you shouldn't have it. And all then digital. when an EMP goes off and wipes us all out, then what? You know, <laughs> exactly. I'm pretty sure cassette tapes will not survive that either. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm not okay. But here's the thing: a CD Here, definitely this will. Is, no. This is also my solid point. It's printed on a disc. It's <laughs> I'm not. I'm not bringing my little brown suitcase with me on the pod with my cassette. You, you shouldn't have been bringing your phone on the kayak either. Okay, you know what? It it was waterproof. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say Groucho approves. That's the best way to segue. Uh, Groucho approves. It was waterproof. (laughs) It was waterproof as long as you don't submerge it at the bottom. (laughs) Leave it there. (laughs) Listen, uh, I should have had better shorts. Is it turtle proof or muck proof? (laughs) -proof. Is it shark proof? (laughs) Not muck proof. (laughs) It's certainly mm-hmm. not Robbie proof. No. Oh. Technology is definitely not Robbie proof. Mm. Dude, the next time you buy a phone case, you should look at the back and just kind of look for a picture of yourself that says Bobbert proof. You know, <laughs> buy that one. I, I did actually. Uh, did I tell you about my process of buying my new phone case? <laughs> I spent a solid like five to six hours on Amazon. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Scrolling through all of their cases. Did you remember your tag words and then say, hey, you bought this or that in the past. Let's bring it into this. You can put it this did, in your did case. a few of those, and I was like, no, no, I don't need this. And then I looked at the waterproof cases, and I was like, I don't know. This might be like a really bad admittance that like I can't trust myself around the water with the And then phone. you looked at a discount on another site, and Bezos cohorts being what they are, start showing an ad in the right-hand corner for your Amazon shop cart, and you're like, fine, I guess I'll check out now. <laughs> uh, I just bought it's, the $5 Amazon anime case. It was fine. <laughs> It's great when they start combining all of your like search history purchases into like one ad. eBay's got like even worse. That does it now twice. they do the whole. eBay now does the whole. Did you forget something? I'm like, no, I'm not checking out anytime soon. <laughs> I'm in no rush. Ask me in five years when I finally run out of discs and I've sold them to all my friends who do podcasts and want something new that's not on streaming and still have the is, is that how this podcast is distributed you burn it onto discs and send it out to everybody oh no i give them the <laughs> box sets that are rare and hard to find that are 80 bucks I, i've already given away captain power and millennium and a bunch of other shows that are never going to be on streaming sorry i'm just glad you're not burning this episode that we're listening to onto a disc or like onto no, a cassette tape I, dude once you press it onto a record send it over here that'll put on the wall <laughs> Well, I've got to make sure it's the funny bits, not the, us losing our shit. <laughs> <laughs> Only uh, the funny bits. Only the funny shit. And even then, that's subjective. Someone else is going to be like, you fuckers talk too much. Well, yeah, if you point, uh, b- burn the uh, or print the, the vinyl record of only the funny bits. The vinyl I, record. <laughs> I ex- I, uh, I'm excited. I'm a millennium. The- <laughs> What's vinyl? Get out I'm of ex- here. I'm excited to get the blank disc from you of all the funny bits from this episode. <laughs> right. I'm drawing a blank. There were no funny bits. Yeah, exactly. Whoa. It'll save you some real time in the editing suite. Just, uh, just, there we it's go. All sucked. 
Uh, warning, I've just thrown away our episode. Uh, it's never airing. Fuck you very much. <laughs> it, it hit the floor. Fuck you too, Cam. You suck. You absolutely <laughs> suck. Our first collaboration ever, and you s- fucked it up. <laughs> Is that uh, how I sound? Is that how you sound? I don't know. <laughs> that's how I sound. I don't know about you, but... I, I, I'm I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm just not yeah, really angry. Yeah. I'm walking here. I hope I sound like Groucho <laughs> and not Joel Silver or any <laughs> other angry producer in Hollywood. <laughs> Oh, there's a great podcast about him on uh, the making of the Tales from the Crypt show. <laughs> He's just so animated. How he could be passionate one minute and then just shouting the next. By the time I hang up this phone, you got to say yes. <laughs> I guess I'm saying no. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Felicia. Sorry, someone's honking outside my window. <laughs> It's Groucho's spirit saying, wrap this up. To stop. <laughs> yeah, let me just shout at him real quick. Hey! Cut it out! I don't think they heard me. I should have opened the window. But you got to end it with motherfucker. Facts. Pull the Sam Jackson. <laughs> We're talking the Marx Brothers. Mother We're talking brother. important topics here. Talking walking first. here. <laughs> hey, I'm walking here. Hey, I'm podcasting here. And then pull off Fonz from Happy Days. Hey. <laughs> so weird to see that actor not as the Fonz. Right. He's on Barry and you're yeah, wondering how many people have actually grown up watching what you watched. And you're like, <laughs> but do you really, really know what he's famous? Yeah, he's a producer. He worked on MacGyver. Yeah, that's only part of the story. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, he was on Barry. That's the show he's famous for. Like Bill Hader. He never right. anything his career Barry. just began the other day. Oh, he's he's acted a lot. I'm like, come on, mention their signature role. Come on. I yeah, hate Bill Hader's uh, signature role: uh, the park owner in Adventureland. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're getting old when you mention, "Hey, don't be the Fonz to someone," and they go, "Who's that?" Ah, uh, right. Well, that's what you get for working with a lot of teenagers. Well, listen, they were, smack- <laughs> they were li- okay, dude, they literally went up to a machine, started smacking the top of it. What else am I supposed to call? <laughs> they put a jukebox in your coffee shop. <laughs> Basically. I want to, dude, I want to see you walk in as the manager and like smack the top. And just like, <laughs> All right. There's a new regiment around here. Yeah. Christopher Walken from SNL. <laughs> you mean Christopher Walken from King of New York, the deer hunter in Pulp Fiction, right? <laughs> and SNL. It's just it's like everyone acts like they're only famous for one role. It's no, like Christopher Walken from King of New York or oh, King of mean, Staten Island, that's what it is. You mean Christopher Walken from Spy Kids too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chris no, Walken Denny Trahan from Spy Kids. True romance, right? I love that movie. <laughs> Christian Slater's the shit. Mel Kilmer from Willow, right? Well <laughs> Top Gun and uh, you know what, fuck you. You haven't even seen the doors. Top <laughs> secret. It's a great fucking right, movie. Top secret. Thank you. Oh my god, that was great. <sighs> I had the airplane top secret double pack I got from Costco Ooh. growing up. And some of those discs are also great. It's like this is where it's also fun too. Keep your disc just in case they fuck up the Blu-ray version, you know? <laughs> or it's too expensive and not worth the upgrade. <laughs> Dude, I'm still looking for a. Um, have you ever? It's an anime movie. Uh, it's uh, Lupin the Third, Castle of Cagliostro. Fuck it, I don't watch it. No, seriously, go ahead. <laughs> it's it's a great film. Uh, it's like one of Miyazaki's earliest uh, <laughs> directed films. And it hasn't been given a proper release. What was that? It hasn't been given a proper release. I'm no, sure. it has, but there's two dubs. Ooh. And the dub that is on every streaming service is the bad one of the two dubs. Mm, and so the good one the cheaper version. basically exists only as like a DVD from like 2002 that I have a copy of and I can't find. It is the saddest thing. I've that. seen that with some of those Hong Kong martial arts movies as well. It's like you, know, you, you can get a good resolution version of it, but you're going to see some extra cheesy <laughs> You know, noises added. So take your pick. <laughs> well, I usually just add the noises myself for that. So I'll just put. Oh, it on you mute, mute it. Perfect. It. Yeah, just 
then redub it. It's a South like, Korean Blu-ray worth the picture upgrade. And you it's, a, it's like a Kung Power What's Up Tiger Lily every time I, uh, I get nice. drunk and watch Kung Fu movies. Oh, so. I like your style, my friend. <laughs> we were doing that. We were watching even something educational like Bill Nye or Sesame Street. It's like, I think we're going to add our own soundtrack. Our, parent, our folks got so mad. It's like, here's the educational format for what it is. And my brother and I were so naughty we were doing like a easier like typing program where like an animation would play after you type a certain word and could progress to the next story and we couldn't resist we started typing rude phrases on there and we're like you use that for that and that's the last time you use it and i'm like okay i guess we can't be naughty anymore i guess we'll go to school and do that <laughs> but how do you pronounce the word shit right how do you I spell it mom oh uh, we were spelling out beavis and butthead or asshole and you're like hey can't do that. <laughs> Happens. Happens. Thank you all so much for being on here. What can we expect on Pilot or Pass next few episodes? So we Regardless just put out our uh, our Power Rangers episode. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been on a little hiatus recently just because of, you know, some life stuff, but uh, I've got some queued up episodes that are are going to be some good stuff so power rangers just came out oh what's the next one after that i don't remember <laughs> oh yeah that I, I scheduling isn't my responsibility <laughs> yeah i'm the one who maintains the calendar <laughs> there's something well we, we got something working if you ed- edit out my furious typing i'll pull up my uh my list <laughs> I'll just pretend it's me diffusing the nuclear codes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how it is. Um, okay. Yep. Totally. So Pop 53, let's see, is... Why did you name it this, Robbie? Rob Zombie. <laughs> what, did, what did I name it? Oh, it's uh, Catla and Sweet Tooth. That's well, what it is. Why you did said I name the, it? The, the, the name of the script for that one that we wrote out, you've named... The end is like seven episodes away until season two. And I'm just like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it means what I think it means. <laughs> so we got Kotla and Sweet Tooth coming out. Uh, we got you and Safe after that. And then a we did an Adult Swim episode. That's a, about a month out. Um, oh, wonderful. That was real fun. But No kids allowed. Remember that? Yeah. We did uh, cartoons by era. We did the 70s, then we moved on to the 80s, and then when we got to the 90s, it was so much fun. <laughs> Remember, the, this is where they start getting into the bumper era. Just all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. That no one will remember. They're like, is it on streaming? You're missing the point. Do you remember it or not? It's okay to say you just don't know. You're just new. I'm the guy... I get a reference even if I've never seen that movie on Psych, you know, and it's just so many other people, it just goes over their head. They have to have seen it. And you're like, well, whenever I stop understanding something, I just sit there quietly <laughs> and hope that the awkward silence moves the conversation along. Right. It's like, oh, the joke didn't fly, regardless of where you got it. <laughs> moving on. Bye, Felicia. What movie is that from? I mean, not worthy of my time. It's from Friday. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> is that how you end this? You just shout, bye, Felicia? No. I'm until just, the guests hang up? No, no. I'm just being a dick. <laughs> Great having you on here. You guys were very animated and really cool. And Yeah, dude. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think you said this is like your first guest star. Yeah, we've had guests on our show, but we've never guested on other ones. Yeah. There's so many others who refuse to guess. They're like, I got too much going on, or I just don't feel like it. I'm shy. I'm like, you are kidding. You have a voice. You have Share a it. podcast for one. <laughs> a podcast. <laughs> you want more people to listen? You guessed on other podcasts. It works in your favor. And I don't know, it gets you out of your comfort zone and you make friends. <laughs> yeah, no, I got the message from uh from Ben when I was at work and one of my coworkers is like, is that a good thing that's happening to your face or a bad thing that's happening to your (laughs) face right now and i was like oh no this is like one of the best things that could happen right now so follow us
us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a Jack Review Show.